smart, high-tech, luxurious. These are perhaps not the words you'd have used to describe a Hyundai 10 or even five years ago. And yet here we are with the company's latest Santa Fe, which is a vehicle that encapsulates all of those qualities and more. In this CarGurus UK review, we are going to dig into the appeal of this 7C SUV, looking at what it does well, where it could perhaps improve, and whether you should be considering one if you are in the market for a vehicle to transport your troops. Here on the CarGurus UK YouTube channel, we post two new videos per week, covering both new and used car reviews. As ever, if you enjoy what you see, please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you'll know when our videos go live. Obviously, you can make your own mind up about the styling of this fourth generation Santa Fe, but what I will say is that build quality is excellent. We've got nice, consistent panel gaps everywhere. We've got some chrome detailing as well, which looks good, and everything is just solid and substantial. Come and check this out as well for a nice detail. Like I say, this is a seven seat SUV. To access the third row, all you do, press that button, it slides out of the way. I love that. Now, I'm still probably oh, about 30 years too old to be able to make this look easy, but, my foot untangled there, I can still get in. Once in, you'll find there are heater controls for the third row along with some useful storage. So we get two full-size seats back here, which is good. Headroom is a little bit tight, but it's doable. Um, and as long as the person in front is prepared to have their seat a little bit forward, share some leg room, it's actually not bad for leg room. The only thing is because the floor's quite high, your knees are kind of up around your chest, but really it's okay. And if I want to get out, press that button. Hey presto. It's a shame that these easy release seats are only on one side of the car. If you're on the other side, the best option is to fold the whole seat back, which can be done remotely, but doesn't leave nearly as much room to clamber out. This second row of seats is also very roomy. Like I say, you can slide them to share leg space with the third row or create more boot space. You can also recline the backrests, which is really nice. The only thing you don't get is three individual rear seats. This is split 40-60, whereas in Something like a Peugeot 5008, you get three individual chairs. However, aside from that, this is excellent. Headroom's good, there's a flat floor. Yeah, I mean, it, it does everything you need it to. On the subject of practicality, let's have a look at boot space. Starting with noting that it's a power tailgate, that comes a standard on all but the entry level Santa Fe and is indicative of how well equipped this car is. Right, at the moment, we've got the third row seats in place. But even then, there is a bit of boot space. You could fit a set of golf clubs or a few bags of shopping. Drop these rear seats, which is simple as pulling these straps. And now you've got a massive boot. And if that's not big enough, you just press these buttons here and the second row seats drop flat too. It could not be any simpler. Also neat is the way you can store the parcel shelf under the boot floor when it's not needed. For practicality then, the Santa Fe is well, it's excellent, isn't it? And no surprise, it's good here as well. So we've got lots of storage areas. There's a wireless phone charger in this tray here. We've got a couple of cup holders, nice big storage under the armrest, big glove box, albeit mostly filled with manuals. And the design as well, I think is really smart. This curve along the top of the dash is almost Jaguar-like. And while we've got some harder, scratchier plastics lower down, everything higher up, all the stuff that you're likely to touch like the dash and the steering wheel and the gear lever all feels really good. This upmarket look is complemented by plenty of technology. Our SE premium spec car includes heated and ventilated seats, a heated steering wheel, electric adjustments of the seats and a panoramic sunroof. This 8 inch touchscreen might not be the biggest on the market today but it is good. The software is fairly responsive, the graphics are pretty good and most importantly it's very easy to find your way around the different menus. The dials, meanwhile, are a bit of a mishmash, actually, between analogue and digital. Personally, from an aesthetic point of view, I think I'd rather have all analogue or all digital. But from a usability point of view, no complaints. It's very easy to navigate around the digital screen in the middle, and the display is very crisp.
all Santa Fe's use the same 2.2 litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine. Obviously it comes with all the latest emissions control equipment, but what you don't get is any kind of hybrid technology. It produces 200 horsepower and 325 pound foot of torque, which means it's adequately powerful for an SUV of this size and weight. 0 to 62 miles per hour takes around nine seconds. In terms of refinement, when it's cold or when you rev it really hard, you definitely know it's a diesel, but in gentle driving, it's actually pretty good. But what really makes this car work, what really stands out from the drivetrain, is this eight-speed automatic gearbox. New for the latest generation of Santa Fe, the eight-speed auto is offered alongside a six-speed manual. It costs around £2,000 extra to have this auto over the manual, but I really do think it's worth it. For 99.9% .9 of the time, this is a very good gearbox. It's incredibly smooth and it almost always has you in the right gear at the right time. You can also use this driving mode button down here to select sport mode or take control with the paddles and it'll give you a bit more urgency. And if you go for a four wheel drive model like this one, changing the driving mode will also alter the torque split between the front and the rear axle. So in sport mode, it will send between 35 and 50% of power to the rear axle, whereas in comfort mode, it's 20 to 35%. And in eco mode, it'll either be front wheel drive or send up to 20% of drive to the rear axle. There's also a four wheel drive lock mode, which holds a 50-50 torque split up to 19 miles per hour. From behind the wheel, you're only ever really gonna feel what difference this makes if you are seriously pushing the car's capabilities, but that doesn't necessarily mean driving fast. It could be that you're off-road or towing. On the subject of which, a manual Santa Fe will tow up to two and a half tons. This auto, that's down to two tons. All Santa Fe's also come with a trailer stability assist program, which is an electronic system which just helps keep the trailer in line. And to help with maneuvering, you get a reversing camera and front and rear parking sensors on all Santa Fe's. And this top spec premium SE model has a surround view camera as well. When it comes to ride and handling, Hyundai hasn't pulled off any miracles, but nor has it made any serious errors. The Santa Fe is, for example, tauter and more controlled than a Kia Sorento. Now, the downside of that is that the low speed ride is a bit firmer, but like I say, once you're cruising or you want to string together a few corners, it does feel like a more precise vehicle. Now, given Hyundai's relentless progress over the last few years, it's not impossible to envisage a day where future Santa Fe's might be available with the kind of air suspension that you get on something like an Audi Q7. Until that day comes, for all the Santa Fe's good bits, it can't match the likes of the Q7 for pure cosseting ride comfort. But by the standards of mainstream SUVs, it's actually very well judged. Prices for this latest Santa Fe range from around £33,500 to around £43,500, so clearly it's far from bargain basement. That said, for the amount of car, the amount of power, the amount of equipment and the quality that you get, I don't think it feels unreasonable, and that's before you even factor in Hyundai's five-year unlimited mileage warranty. This then is a car that takes all of Hyundai's sensible qualities and combines them with a good slug of desirability. Would you take a Santa Fe over a Sorento, a Peugeot 5008 or a Skoda Kodiak? Let us know in the comments. And remember, when it comes to choosing your next car, you can easily find great deals from top-rated dealers at cargurus.co.uk.